Okay. It, it, we got a message that said we're being live streamed. Great. All right. It's setting it up. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for, for being here. A number oh. of people said to me that they've seen the film and they're glad I'm going and will I share, you know, I'm probably all of us have, have friends who are. We got a message that said we're being live streamed. Oops. Great. Sorry, I need to turn off my other computer. I had it here so that I could see. It. So, Anne, I'm sorry, I was a little distracted. You were saying. Just to say there, I, I at least two people said to me, I'm so glad you're going to the meeting. Please share and we talked quite a bit about it before. I, and I assume that's true of others that, you know, the group is really bigger than this who are yes. interested in being here. Yeah. Yes, the just the mailing list is over 400 people. So, so yeah, we, we got a lot of, and I, we got a lot of responses from people saying, I wish I could, I could go, blah, 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 take minutes. It's like, oh, take minutes, how horrible. <laughs> the worst person for a minute taking. So, so this is perfect, I think. Uh, so I'm putting in the chat a um, the plan. We can be very flexible, but you know, just to give you an idea, I would like to start off with a with a question for every everybody to answer, and then I'll send you another link. Then we talk about your feelings, your feedback, and then see how if we can plan what to do going forward. Because I think we can't simply keep doing what we're doing right now based on what the we've learned in the movie. And then we'll see another question, question number two, see if things have changed after our discussion. So let me first of all, give you the link to this article. Um, and this is a, an article that Joseph Brzozowski sent me. He is the guy who is doing the e-waste at our recycling events now. And so he's, he's really involved and recycling efforts. And he sent me this this morning. I woke up at like six and I got to read it immediately. I didn't send it out because I didn't want to overwhelm people. So before, before I read this article, I wasn't sure what to do after I read it. I am sure what to do. So I hope um, you, you read it and come to your own conclusions. Um, and then, um, well, then well, we'll go from there. It's, I think it's, Quite. Let's just leave it at that. All right. Who wants to talk? I've been talking too much. Who wants to say something it's about your reactions? Or I now have a problem. I've totally lost. I tried to click on the article and I've lost everybody. I can't see anybody. I'm like all I can do. Are you on a phone or a computer? No, I'm on my computer, and I've like totally. All I see is my home screen. I'm just what kind like, of computer do you have? A Mac. Okay, so do uh, hover, make your your screen hover over your your trackpad. Uh huh. Do you get anything? No, I don't have anything. No, nope. I'm just back to my home screen. So I'm and I can't even get off because I can't even see. I don't have the Zoom screen at all. Can you move your arrow down all the way down? Uh huh. Yep. Do you get a bar with uh -huh. the the different? Okay, then you can go to Zoom. I don't have Zoom on my, oh, there it is. There we go. Okay, everybody's back. Thank you. See, sometimes I, spending half your life on Zoom is actually helpful. I guess so. So, okay, <laughs> I will not click on that article again. I won't, okay, so, okay. Yeah, it's very long, so you, you won't be able to read it now. All right, so reactions to the situation, the film gut feeling oh well I was I said I was going to do the poll first let's do the poll because it's kind of fun um where is this thing it's interactive uh, oops okay just answer the first question Out loud or on this poll? On, on, yeah, there. You just, uh, you're supposed to have a little. You want us to to actually fill in the questionnaire. Exactly. Just the, the first question. Right now, which way are you leaning? Cancel all your recycle collections or let's stick with some or all of to recycle or not sure? 
I don't know if it'll let you submit if you haven't done the second question. Yeah, it says. Oh, okay, it's, well then do the the second question again. <laughs> yeah. So I the second was question is based on our discussion. So it's yeah, so hard just answer the same. I, I answered the uh, exactly the same. Okay, right. got. It. Oh, okay, I see. I got you. All right. All right. So we have um, five of eight people. Okay, so a majority of people are not sure. That's where I was when I, before I read this, this article. So let me move this out of the way. Okay. Let's hear what people have to say. Diane. Can you um, summarize the article for us since we don't have a chance to read it? Um, basically it's, um, it's written by this uh, journalist, it's Bloomberg. Um, she she put no, okay. the most important detail, I think, is that she put uh, trackers on three different items and uh, she found that they are probably just trashing that happened to somebody else the the items um, oh, there we go. I think this is, well, she doesn't state it like that, but basically there are too many unanswered questions. And from what I read in this article, uh, they mentioned the, the video that we saw and uh, that's what sort of what started the, the, their own, her own research. Um, TerraCycle is basically not recycling. Maybe it's recycling some, but it's certainly not recycling 100%, like uh, the the CEO says claims. So basically, that's Sharon CB. Yeah, you know, I have been uh, I haven't been in the inner uh, circle of sustainable Roanoke. I've been bringing stuff to you for a couple of years, but what it does mean is that I don't know how much stuff you collect for TerraCycle. Is it a lot? Can you tell me a little, just briefly about that? I think Nikki can answer that question better. Are you driving, Nikki, or can you answer that? You're not driving. You're muted. I think I'm not driving. I'm a passenger. Um, <laughs> so the question was, how many um, are we recycling with TerraCycle? How much? Yes. Uh -huh. Probably 80%. Well, really, wow. really. Wow. Yep. Wow. In terms of in terms of weight, volume. No. Um, if we are doing twenty six items, I would say I don't know twenty nineteen twenty. Are but in, go to TerraCycle. But in terms of weight or volume, I, I would I would be concerned about weight because that's you know that's what takes the energy to transport all that weight, I, I would assume. I don't know, I'm no expert. But for example, we have the pop, pop sockets or whatever those things are for the phone, the Febreze, this or that. So those are kind of smaller wastes. But are they actually being recycled? We don't know. I seriously doubt it. Right. So basically we're just, pass, we're paying to pass on our stuff to some other garbage place and we are um i i see your hand trip and we are also having a a worse impact by having people go to our recycling events some people drive from far away uh, then we get all that stuff have to drive it to our our storage facility then we have to either ship it or drive it so that's why we're questioning this. If it were just minimal uh, carbon footprint, yeah, why not? I mean, it could it could be good. So, mm -hmm. Trip, you have you have your hand up. Yeah. Um, so I just really had one question to ask, um, at least beforehand. But I watched the movie documentary thing. Um, my friend that lives in Roanoke, she sent it to me, and I just found out about this sustainability Roanoke thing recently. Uh, I live in Giles, but um, I've been collecting stuff in a big box to bring you guys, um, thanks to my friend telling me about what you're doing. But um, 
so my question is, is how much have you talked to TerraCycle about, you know, what can they tell us? Can they show proof of where they sent each thing and, and, and where it went? Because if they can't show proof of like where the things go to us, then that would be a big red flag for me. Um, of course, like even if they did show proof, you'd have to confirm that it actually was true. But if they just completely refused to show proof, then to me, that would make me vote to just not waste time with them. Yeah, we did write, to, I did write to them um, and they responded a, a typical um, letter that really doesn't, doesn't say much. Um, and they, in the movie, the movie, of course, they don't get any, any proof that they do anything with it. And the article, there is no proof either that anything is being done anywhere. And um, the emphasis is on, you know, you get this stuff, take it to a place, um, store it there. In, in some cases, for example, you, you have a huge impact. There was this, the article talks about this facility where they decided to um, store car seats and they ended up with a huge amount of car seats and a rat infestation and the, the neighbors were having to do something about it. So they're having a negative impact in general. So yeah, I, if, if this were a really, what, 100% positive enterprise, they would be totally transparent, right? I mean, yes. yes. Sharon, and then Diane, and then Kirk. So um, who makes the Trex lumber and benches and all of that? Where does that come from? Mm -hmm. That goes to Trex. Um, Trex is um, Virginia-based. They're in Winchester, Virginia. <laughs> it's completely separate from TerraCycle, and they do um, the plastic film, all the plastic film and grocery bags. So we do know that that gets recycled. Um, of course, recycle really is not the term. It gets downcycled, as we learned in, in the film, right? It gets downcycled. And then once it gets downcycled to whatever it is they're making, the benches that we get and benefit from too, uh, that, that's it. That's the end of the line. That will go to a landfill. It's not going to be recycled again. And here in Florida, it's really sad because I do see they make lumber um, that they use for decking and, and stuff and, and near waterways. And I have seen the, the lumber, it's not lumber, I guess, the, the boards. I don't even know what to call it, boards. boards. Uh, mm -hmm. They are disintegrating and they are disintegrating into the lagoon where the poor fish and manatees are struggling to yeah, survive all this toxicity. Mm -hmm. So that's honestly not a good solution. I mean, we do have to do something with all the plastic we have, but that can't be the only thing. So we have then Diane, then Kirk, and then Pam. I'm not really sure what I was gonna say. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but actually, I, I agree with Trip. Um, it does seem that if there is no transparency, then that would raise a red flag. But the other thing is, what is the message that we're sending? We're, you know, when we're collecting all this stuff, we're, it, we're basically saying to the community, oh, we're going to recycle our way out of this problem, rather than people changing their behavior and not buying this stuff and using it. Right. And that's, that's my concern about recycling. And so what I heard you say, did, did you just say that the, the Trex lumber is actually disintegrating? Yes, it deteriorates. Oh, you know, I want to just to speak to the, I have a, I had a Trex deck installed two years ago and, and I, it may depend on the climate and where you are because mine is just like such an improvement over what I had before that was taking a lot of stain and a lot of maintenance, which was incredibly toxic. And I love my track stack <laughs> really. And I know it's a down cycle, but I I'm hoping to get 20 years out of it. And so um, 
if I were, if it was in Florida, they'd be declining and I could appreciate that. But yeah, so for me, that feels like not a hundred percent perfect solution, but, but workable for kind of like a transition. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to shop that yeah. out. All That's right. Cool. We had Kirk then. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is sort of a broader question. There seems to be a lot of, uh, of uh, talk about the fact that recycling seems to be a waste of time. And I know Greenpeace is, is sort of promoting that and that uh, we are producing more, far more plastic than we are recycling. And obviously what we need to do is stop making it and buying it. But I guess one of the concerns I have is that as the message gets louder and louder, and I've got a really good friend who's, who's a rabid environmentalist and he doesn't bother to recycle anymore because he says uh, none of it's being recycled. And what is happening to, somebody has to be making money in this recycling process, right? I mean, why would they bother to collect it? But I'm hearing more and more that the recycling that's going on seems to all end up in the landfill. So what is the story? How do we tell uh, ourselves and how do we tell people who are bringing stuff to us that if they come across things that are saying recycling is a waste of time, uh, don't bother. Um, wh where do we stand with that? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly the question that, that we have to tackle. And, and that's why we thought it was important to involve as many people as uh, wanted to be involved because, because it's not easy. There is no easy solution to this. And so we don't, mm -hmm. don't want to impose the solution on the community. We actually want the community to, to reach a consensus or a decision. So, Well, the movie our, that we watched it had uh, it certainly brought up the criminal element in all this. I mean... We're, we're doing harm. Uh, my grandchildren are half Indonesian, and when I saw the landfill in Indonesia, the poor, you know, the poorest string islands right there. It's just a string of islands right by the water. Everything, and yeah. um, Turkey, Bulgaria, and Indonesia, when China refused. So, I mean, clearly there's harm, and there's a lot of money exchanging hands. Man in Denmark said, I think it, maybe it wasn't the man in Denmark, but one man in charge of a facility said the same amount of money is involved as in human trafficking. I yes. mean, this is this is serious stuff here, contrib contributing to ethical, ethical dilemma. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I liked what I heard about Winchester and. Um, the part about there's a midline, if you will, use for, for all the plastic that we put in the bins at the grocery stores and the co-op and with sustain. But I think if we can't have firsthand knowledge, proof of something going somewhere, like Fleet Feet takes tennis shoes and the rescue mission comes to get them and they use them at the rescue mission. And if they can't use them, they recycle them. But I mean, you know, that's a local reuse. Um, I, I think tracing down those sorts of things where we have the word of a local person, I, I think that's something we can continue to prove. Yes, and we, we are, we're not even considering not, not doing uh, tracks or not now that we have located this new plastic uh, uh, recycling or melting facility, uh, we would still continue to collect all the plastic. And we're talking about one through six, except not, not three, one, two, four, five, six. So that's a lot of plastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, it's, it's not insignificant, uh, but, but we know what where that's going okay pam trip and donald or Dan. okay there was okay. anna ann was right before me because i want i don't want to cut in line <laughs> but i'm so. sorry i'm sorry about the line i'm sorry no no no, no. i mean 
I I wasn't sure who was before me. So I just wanted to double check. I, the movie, um, it disgusted me. It's just people out making, you know, making money any way they can. And um, the whole greenwashing, it makes me wonder how many of the businesses who hire treks like Kroger, I was so distressed to see Kroger was one of the people. Um, how many know that, you know, they're just buying this program falsely and, um, and that, uh, you know, they're, they're just selling more products. I, after this program started, I started buying more Kroger things just because I went, I can recycle the bags. And um, it also made me feel double guilty because I was buying, buying more chips. And then I saw the chips can't, those uh, aluminum lined chip bags can't be recycled. So I'm going to try to stop eating those. Um, but um, I was just, you know, I wonder how many of the businesses know because I would just quit start getting things from them. Um, but I'm sure there's no way you can get them to admit if they did know. And, um, you know, if they could get with some other company. Because Trex is making a lot of money off of these big businesses just to say, we're recycling your stuff. So, um, well, TerraCycle. Trex, yeah. as far I as mean, we not, know. Not yes, Trex, right, TerraCycle. Right. Yeah. yeah. Too yeah. much Trex talk. On. Too many um, T's. <laughs> so, um, anyway, that's, I just, it doesn't shock me because. People are so unethical anymore. So, um, but it disgusted me. So that's how I felt about the movie. Yeah, I think you you are kind of pointing towards a path in a way because they may be greenwashing on purpose, but maybe they don't know, and maybe we could have play a part there, making these companies aware. <laughs> of what's happening. So that could be part of something if we, if we get together and decide, let's organize and do some sort of campaign to change things at glacial speed, because that's, we're, we're trying to change things um, one by one, basically. But, all right, thank you, Pam, Pam that's, that's really important. All right, Trip. Hey, hey, I just had one comment. I don't know a whole lot about the plastic deck boards that you guys were talking about earlier. Um, but I do know that for like wooden decks, the type of wood that's used it is always has some kind of metal put into it to prevent it from rotting. And typically it's copper, which is why like a uh, pressure treated board is has a green hue. So, you know, it would be interesting to compare like which one is actually less um, damaging to the environment, uh, you know, putting metal in the wood, which will still eventually disintegrate, but, you know, last longer than untreated wood or using a plastic that should last almost forever. You know, I don't, I don't know, but I mean, if the plastic boards are disintegrating, then clearly maybe a different type of plastic should be used, something that would be forever lasting. Um, yeah, I feel like plastic should be dedicated to that sort of thing. And then um, the biodegradable sort of plant-based stuff should be used for like packaging materials where mm -hmm. you're not. Yeah. Thanks, Drip. All right, Donald or Deb. Um, a couple of things. I know there are ways of buying things that aren't made with plastic, like deodorant. Um, I actually have found deodorant containers that are cardboard outside. There's no plastic involved at all. Um, it, it's a hunt for these kind of things and it's, a, and, and that maybe that's something for us to, um, educate people about trying to find things like, I mean, I first found this one at Target. So some of the stores are trying to alleviate some of this, but until consumers start asking for it, it's not going to change. I do know, I read an article not too long ago, Aldi is requiring everything in their stores to be <clears throat> biodegradable packaging wise 
I think by 2024. Yeah. Um, or returnable. Um, so, I mean, it's almost going to have to be at the store level or the consumer level because the manufacturers, they're saving tons of money by not changing their packaging. Yeah. And, and I think for me too, uh, this is an opportunity, and I don't know if this is beyond us, but an educational opportunity to to educate consumers and and to educate, in some cases, stores who may or may not know. Again, we're just a small group in one town, but if the merchants and if the public demand that, they're going to have to give it to them. I mean, that's what they did with the with the recycling, but unfortunately, we were greenwashed. Um, so I think that's a, an approach we should consider as well. But as far as to recycle. Uh, Tons of money coming in, no transparency. They can't really explain anything. Uh, I say we take a pass on them. All right. Now, the biggest part for me is that there's no transparency. What exactly are they doing with all of this? Because we're paying them to take it, basically. Yes, it's a great business model. Yeah. <laughs> They're taking something that nobody wants and they are turning it into, well, we don't know what they're turning it into, into money, right. basically. They're turning it in, into money. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Sharon B. Is TerraCycle a public or a private corporation? And the reason why I ask is, are there public records available for it? Because... One of the questions I had is, you know, unless the individuals in the company are getting really wealthy, what's their motivation for taking trash and lying about what happens to it? And I couldn't help but think that, you know, this is a classic example of a company and starting with an individual whose ambitions grew way faster than they could manage. So, you know, you've talked about lack of transparency and I can't speak to that, but um, I, I guess I would want to make sure that this, that, that basically that they have ill intent, that they are doing this deliberately to make money US. and to not recycle, because if it's more of a, they're, they're at a hump that they haven't yet so gotten over, just, then that's different yeah. than I'm running away with billions of dollars, ha, ha, ha. So I guess I'd like a little more information on that if we have a way of getting it. Yeah, I just pasted what I copied with, this is from, from Wikipedia. It, it's a private okay. company. And I, I suspected it was private, so I'm assuming it is pri private. Suzanne. Yeah, I couldn't, I can't find my little yellow hand, right? <laughs> um, one question I have, so, so the company, as I understand it, companies contract with TerraCycle, they put that logo on their product and then the company, does the company pay to do that? Probably. Or what's, I, I missed that connection. <clears throat> um, so I don't know if TerraCycle is collecting both from the company and from the consumer, or was that a way for them to get the word out? There was, I didn't understand that piece. Did anybody else get? Um, Nikki, do you know? Nikki is the TerraCycle expert. Okay, um, to my understanding, um, TerraCycle makes their money by partnering with corporations so that the corporations can say, yep, we're recycling our, you know, <laughs> they're being recycled. Um, but they're also making money off of us because we, so there's two ways to recycle with TerraCycle. There's the free programs, which we box up one, we just box up the items, um, a stream, and then um, we send it off. But then we also buy boxes, TerraCycle boxes. Those are nice boxes that they provide us. And those are so expensive, at least $250 per box. And they fill up really quickly. So mm -hmm. we have spent thousands of dollars with TerraCycle, um, recycling wow. with TerraCycle. Yeah. Okay, so wow. would there be, and this is jumping way ahead, um, I mean, I just wonder if there might eventually be a class action suit against them because that's a lot of money. 
And we're not the only people that have been engaged in this process and um, holding them accountable. Mm -hmm. And again, I know that's a long, um, that's a long way out, but good golly, Miss Molly, what a lot of money. Isn't pay. that what that woman in California has done? Yes. Is sued TerraCycle. Right. So it's already starting. A mm -hmm. class action suit is started. I, yes. I knew not class action. Is it class action? I don't know. I, I know very... say it was. I don't think it was. That, I didn't touch it. Was class action. I knew no. she was filing no. charges against them, but it's just, I, I would just be very curious about how many communities, because I was watching her and it's like, oh yeah, this looks familiar. You know, it was like, oh, this is us. Um, well, I think that these things, um, I'm sorry, Kirk, do you, did you want to say something? Go ahead and finish. I just got a comment because I got to jump off here in a minute. Oh, go ahead then. Well, I'm just, one thing I wanted to be clear on is that this, this new uh, stream we have through uh, Floyd to North Carolina, this is, this is for real, right? And we know that the plastics that people are going to drop off are going to actually go somewhere where they're actually going to be used and recycled. Is that true? As far as we know, it is true. Okay. We we know people from Floyd, Sustain Floyd, yeah. um, who have driven down there and they have seen the facility. So yes, and they actually sell their pellets um, back to some company in Roanoke which I think it would be great if we could close the yeah, loop sure somehow. And so we wouldn't have to be doing this. So um, I have I think, great hope for that. I think we need to reassure folks bringing their plastic in that right now we look like we've got our act together and all this other concern about recycling that we know for sure these plastics are going somewhere and they're being broken down and they're being reused ultimately. Because I think that's the question that I was having was like, so why bother, uh, especially with plastics? Uh, um, it doesn't mean that we don't continue to truly educate ourselves and others about buying stuff that's made of plastic. But uh, uh, I think at least um, uh, we need to continue to be sure people aren't just throwing their plastics away because they think that it's a waste of time. So. Um, Anyway, I was just so glad to hear that, but I wanted to be sure that, that this is one that we know for sure. It's not just somebody saying that we think it works. So uh, I think the sustained Floyd folks are um, uh, on top of it. So anyway, well, thank you. I'm glad I sat in today and uh, I won't be able to make the next recycling thing, unfortunately, but uh, I'll stay in touch. All right. Thanks for coming, Kirk. Thanks, and everybody. Contributing. Mm -hmm. Um, so what I was going to say, Suzanne, is that I, in my experience, these drastic changes tend to take place very slowly at first, and then it snowballs from there, and and then one day, boom, things change. Um, and that's it. But so what we need to do, I think, I think that this this uh, video is doing and the article we need to keep talking about this and uh, so that everybody knows because i mean i wanted to believe in recycling i fell for it and pam said you 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 bought the greenwashing you said well i actually did buy it too uh, when we had a croakers nearby i would buy their frozen things because they would take them and uh, yeah that's you know what does Kroger do? I mean, with the simple truth, do we know where that goes? TerraCycle. Oh, the Kroger. When we separate out the Kroger stuff, Kroger sends it to TerraCycle. We send it to TerraCycle, yeah. Okay. Separate from the other TerraCycle stuff, the the Kroger stuff goes to TerraCycle as well. It's just packaged separately. Is that right? I'm can yeah. You're talking about the plastic bags, the shopping bags versus. Uh, oh, I'm talking about the simple truth. When when we put ev all the Kroger simple ah. truth in a box and send it to Kroger, correct? We send it so, to TerraCycle. Oh, that goes to TerraCycle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. 
if it's like a brand thing that we separate out, that doesn't go, uh, it goes to, to TerraCycle or actually whatever storage facility they have where they send that. We don't, actually, we have many different addresses, right, Nikki, for the different things that we send out. So it's mm -hmm. not like TerraCycle has a huge um, depot where they, they collect everything. So we sent it, we send it to the different recyclers all over the US who are recyclers or storers or sorters. Oh. And they in turn may actually ship that over overseas or to yet another facility or, or it's very unclear. It's very difficult to track down what's happening to all this stuff. So regarding our transparency with the people that have invested, our community that's invested so much energy and goodwill, um, I think we need to be prepared to share all this with them. And I think you've already done that on, and we need to have a response that, you know, we were operating in goodwill, yet we were schnookered. <laughs> Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. I, there may be some backlash from people that were like, why didn't we do our homework? Um, we, it was not available. I mean, we, right. we didn't. No. And number one, we all want to believe in recycling. We all mm -hmm. want to believe that we're going to put this thing away and it's not going to trash the environment. Something is going to happen to it that, that makes it worth something. So I, I fell for it completely. And yeah. yes, I could have, I guess I could have decided to research, but it didn't even occur to me. It's like, there are some moments when, when a, li a light bulb goes on and it's like, whoa, why did I just buy it? So, mm -hmm. you know, without questioning or anything. So, so yeah, but you're right. Uh, we need to, we need to be able to communicate this well. And it's not, and this is why we didn't want to make, we make our the decision and then try to explain to people like we have all been taken. I mean, we did what we thought was best and, and now we don't know what's best. So, so yeah, we have to adapt. And that's, that was kind of what the other part of, of this meeting that I, that I wanted to, for you guys to discuss, regardless of whether, we continue to do TerraCycle or not, I think it's imperative that we do, well, um, you guys mentioned, um, companies need to know that TerraCycle is at least suspect, that it's not, this is not transparent and these things are not happening, that they said we, do, we uh, recycle 100%, that's just not happening, that's a blatant lie. Um, then, so we could, contact companies, uh, we could get together and write letters to make it a happy occasion, a small group of people design a letter. And um, I do have uh, something to share that somebody wrote who couldn't come. Um, <coughs> so she said, let's see, let's see. Um, maybe a couple of times a year, instead of collecting recycling, we could have a letter writing party. Participants could bring five to 10 names and addresses to write and share. And she's talking here about, for example, she goes to um, a restaurant and they use styrofoam and, instead of real glasses, reusable glasses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, or anything in reality. But we could also have a campaign to contact the companies that work with TerraCycle and put their logo mm -hmm. because now we know that about 5%, I forget what the number was, but they put the logo on everything, but mm -hmm. they recycle just a small percentage of their products, really. So this is like a, just like a big PR campaign. This is what, what they're buying with TerraCycle. Just, just like having ads. Yes, Diane. What really struck me when I was watching the documentary was when they um, interviewed the woman who was filing a lawsuit and she said, I'm a chemical engineer. I know that this cannot be recycled. And that really hit me because mm -hmm. I had always sort of questioned it too. I thought, how can they do this? Where is this magical place that they're taking all this stuff? But I wanted to believe it like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I saved everything, cleaned out my 
toothpaste tubes and you know I mean I did all that but when she said that uh, that really um struck me and um anyway it sounds like we're probably ready for the poll again okay you think let's let's deploy poll number two so I have to I we have to do both again so just okay relaunch say cancel yeah <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see and poll share results. So 78% in favor of canceling, which is is what I also ended up thinking after reading the article, after re watching the movie again for to prepare today. And then reading the article is like, oh, gosh, we can't keep doing this thing. So um, we'll have we'll have to have a board meeting. And and you know what I was thinking also. Oh yeah, Sharon. Sorry, that's all right. I I just wanted to say if if we are canceling, I would like the board to seriously think about the messaging, because. I mean, we, I think all of us have felt all along that recycling is not the answer. It's not sustainable. We've all, you know, as we've been at those sorting parties, just gone, you know, I want to scream. But, you know, recycling is better than nothing if, of course, it's done properly. I don't know that we gain anything by trashing TerraCycle versus saying that, um, you know, we have found better streams and you know pivot on the positive side um you know because again you know do you really I, I really can't believe that they didn't start out with the good with the right intent and maybe they themselves got you know bought out by companies or out of hand or whatever it is but uh, but maybe not but it, it really doesn't matter i would just like us to try and go in a positive direction we have found a, a closer uh, receptacle for our recycle. We're tailoring it more appropriately. And, and I would ask the board to seriously consider the messaging around it. Thank you so much. I, I totally agree with you. And also, if you would like to help with it, I'm usually the one who writes the messages. <laughs> I would, and I, and then I send it to everybody for feedback and everything. If you would like to be involved, of course, you and that, suggestions could you, without stepping up. <laughs> could you could you send me your email? I know I have it somewhere, but um, it's easier if you just drop it in the chat for me. No, you don't have to. I mean, you can share it with everyone. I think we can trust everyone, but or write to Sustainable Roanoke. Yes, you're totally right. It makes no sense to to trash TerraCycle at all or anyone. I mean, I think the truth is better in the truth right now, the truth that we have access to is that we don't have answers. We don't, there is no transparency. So we don't know what's happening. So we have I think to that's, that's the biggest word to use with saying we're severing it is we just don't have any transparency to, um, to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think, how do you feel um, if we decide to cancel, do you think we should still go ahead with the November recycling event? How do, how do you feel? Well, you have the new stream that you're gonna be using anyway, right? And maybe just don't use the TerraCycle stuff. Um, and just you know, cut that off as of right now, but you have this, this new stream that we can still do, which is the biggest part of the plastics anyway. It, maybe it depends on how well you can get messaging now because I counted up TerraCycle takes 18 of our 31 categories and I think people like bringing in their toothpaste tubes and mascara wands and all of that and we've all seen what it's been like dealing with the public when they show up with something that we don't no longer take yeah. and it just becomes enormously discouraging for them. 
So I would actually rather cancel it if we don't think we can adequately pivot in, in time. So what if I just think of something that just occurred to me? I'm just thinking, well, first of all, in that maybe canceling now is a little too abrupt. Like we have the next one coming up. Uh, I guess it's in a month. It's it's not. It's almost a month. Three weeks. Um, so maybe maybe there is time for people to adapt. But if we can use this event as a teaching opportunity, and and I don't know how feasible this is, Nikki, because I I won't be in charge of anything there. Uh, but if we could separate the stations, this is not TerraCycle, this is TerraCycle. This is what's not going to be recycled from now on. Not, not to discourage people or just, just to make them see what that a it, loss this is. That it can't be recycled instead of not being recycled, that literally we can't recycle this. Yes. So, so that we build, I see your hand, Suzanne, so that we build a momentum to get people to step up and do other things that we have mentioned some of. Suzanne, sorry. Yeah. I'm just thinking um, the burden for the volunteers. It's easier for each person individually, if they get the message to not bring their TerraCycle stuff to us. Um, I mean, I, I, I can go to my laundry room and throw out my TerraCycle stuff. If people take the effort to bring it to us and then we have to sort it and we have to get rid of it and deal with it just to preserve something, I, I think that's asking way too much for sustainable and the volunteers. And again, I'm not sure how the messaging goes. And sometimes it is confusing about what people can bring and not bring. But if we can send a clear message and not have to deal with TerraCycle stuff and maybe even have someone on site to answer the questions. Um, but it's almost like prolonging a problem. Yeah. yeah. Could, could you send out a new list of just the things that can be recycled and, um, and you know, are we starting the new stream on in November? Okay. Yes. So just put the say <laughs> it's a, it's a smaller, you know, easier <laughs> trying to make it positive. This is a smaller easier list for you or something like that that um and then if they ask at the uh, at the actual event just say the other stream didn't work or something. I don't it, and if yeah, they didn't I, Yeah, I'm hoping to explain everything, you know, the backs and forths without being too, too, I don't know, uh, lengthy and boring people, but you know, that it has not been an easy decision if, if we decide to make this decision. Nikki, you had a hand, your, your hand up. Yeah, no. Um, so with this new company, um, the one in Lincoln, North Carolina, that's accepting all the other plastics, they accept all plastic. Um, and we don't need to sort them. They have to be clean and dry and all, but you know, um, it's they, they recycle all plastics. It's gonna be one station and you just put in all your ones, two, four, five, and six. Wow. Nice. Yeah, that is nice. But it's nice in a way. Well, I still feel that we do need to do the education part because we need to, you know, use less, reduce plastic, but, um, so am I missing something here uh, about, I mean, I feel like a lot of the TerraCycle will go to this new company. Yeah, well, all the all the hard plastic. All the hard plastic. Yeah. Ones, two, four, five, and six will go to, to this, but then razors, toothpaste, we can't, toothpaste tubes, we can't recycle those. There's, mm -hmm. there's no, no way. Um, the Subaru stuff. Well, Subaru, uh, you know, that's plastic too. Um, plastic, uh, glass, uh, straws, bottle caps, um, 
the so can, cake can just put it all together yeah. yeah we're talking about the foil don't we have some foil stuff? Snack. snacks snacks bags will no longer be like chip bags candy we can't accept those anymore how about styrofoam styrofoam will still do where does that go it goes to uh well the food service styrofoam goes to dart also in north carolina dart company they make um uh, food service uh glass uh and then um, the packaging ones, the, the ones with the little balls on them, they go to Ridgeway, Virginia. How about the bigger, bulkier pieces of plastic that maybe <laughs> Nano is in or something? You know, you said balls. I, I don't know. Oh, um, the packing styrofoam. Yeah, yeah. And when you break, all these balls come out yeah. and... Right. No, they're impossible to to the collect. Peanuts. You're talking about the peanuts, not the peanuts. The big, the big blocks. recycle the peanuts. The big blocks of styrofoam that disintegrate into little balls. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Those go to Ridgeway, Virginia. Okay. And packing peanuts, you can take to UPS. All right, I didn't know that to UPS, yeah, and I've they will use them. Okay. Yeah, and there are actually some packing peanuts that will are made of cornstarch and will dissolve under water. I've had some of those before. All right, we're almost to the end, right? Um, I wanted to mention, uh, you guys are all on the mailing list. I don't know if you're on Facebook or not. On Facebook, I every July, I run a Plastic Free July campaign. So I post well, one piece of advice every day for the entire month of July, uh, talking about things like, you know, somebody mentioned, um, what was it, uh, deodorant or floss, which is actually really bad for you if you use the regular floss, because it also has BPFAs, uh, forever chemicals. So those are really, really bad for your health as well. So that kind of advice, um, Maybe we can, I can do something. I don't want to overwhelm the mailing list. So that's why I don't share that because it's like, it would be like a message every day. And I know I, I'm going to get people saying, rah, rah, rah. so I, I try to be prudent about that. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing that would have been our dream for Nikki and, and Katie and, and me, we have talked about this a lot, is creating a zero waste space store educational center, something where we can, um, you know, find all these things that are in different places and put them all together and, you know, sell them to the community um, for very cheap and, and try to, you know, move on from there. Oh, and Suzanne, so there, do you want to talk about this, the EPR effort? Yeah, just real quickly, Scott Whitaker has been doing some research and um, the state of Maine has implemented um, policy that starts to put the responsibility back on the plastic manufacturers, the packagers. So there's, a, I think it's a tax that's levied for all plastics. And they're only, the only state in the country that has implemented that at 100%. I can't tell you the exact details. Scott's done a lot of the work around that, but he's starting to circulate a letter and engage interest in maybe getting Virginia, starting with the city and our policymakers and show that it actually can be done. And uh, Maine is, it's a, it was a bipartisan effort the state of Oregon, I think, is like at 20%. So um, I'm telling you a little bit about an amazing initiative that I don't know a lot about. I was hoping Scott would be on the call. But we are starting to move the needle on looking at policy. And again, it's going to be a slow move, probably glacier-like, um, to get anything moved out of Richmond. But we're starting the process with Terry McGuire and Scott and some other community folks. Does that, did that make yeah, sense? That's, that's, okay. Yeah, great. 
Thank you. And uh, also you know, trying to work with politicians or target politicians, senators and delegates and see if we can change things at the state level. At the municipality level, it's very difficult because it works differently, but see what, how we can work. Um, and for all these things, we need we need more people because we're, there are five of us on the board, and and we're all, we're basically the board and the executive committee. We do everything. So, so we, if anyone has the slightest idea and would like to get together and and you know try to do something, we're I mean we know the same that you do. So it would be just a bunch of citizens getting together and trying to do something because nobody else is doing it. And I think that that the momentum is building that, that we are going to get there, even if it's going to take years before. But, but if we don't take these steps, we'll never make it. So mm -hmm. I don't know. That's kind of the way I see it. And this is actually what I I always had in mind with Sustainable Roanoke, it turns out that you know there was the pandemic and then I had to move. But my idea about the recycling events was just to gather the community and and then move from there because recycling is not the solution. Sharon. I just want to throw another thought out there for discussion another time, I think. But and that is as part of educating people that recycling isn't the answer. I wonder if there's ever been any thought about restricting single-use plastics. You know, and I had this idea at the last event where someone showed up with a giant bag of little individual oatmeal cups. <laughs> I almost feel like we're helping them greenwash. And yet we're frustrated with corporations greenwashing, saying, oh, I'm recycling. And yet we're facilitating people showing up with single-use plastics. So. I just wanted to throw out that little frustration I had. Don't need to discuss it today. All right, maybe we can do something. Uh, that would have to be done at the state level, I think. So we can start a campaign and just keep pushing until there's a bill and it passes. It, it's going to happen. I mean, we can't continue like this. So mm -hmm. I, th I, yeah, I share your frustration. Pam. Um, well, First, I have a question for Nikki, which is, are the un, the unmarked um, bottle caps, you know, the lids, are those going to be recyclable? As they said all plastic. All plastics. That's lovely. And and Celeste, you're talking about the things you put on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook. Um, can yeah. you put that just like under a heading on the on the um, sustainable Roanoke thing, like <clears throat> tips for the day and just stick it on there. And yep. I, that, I, way, uh, yep. that way you won't bombard anybody. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure out a way to share um, all of these. Um, do you think that one per day, no, I, or maybe having all of them, there are 30 ones. Which I, I, I had, put all of them on if people have missed them and just. Uh, okay. Let they them. used to be on the website, but it took they took up a lot of space and oh. my, the the software was like, Are you sure you want to add this? So I, I took them <laughs> out. <laughs> okay. So but I can I can probably share them in a, a Google Drive and people can just have access to all of them. And that would be, yeah, they can download them and, and take them, have them in a PDF. So thank you, Pam. I'll do that. Thank you. July things. Okay. Anne. I live very close to the Gurdo uh, metal recycle. And um, I save all those little bits and pieces, the tops of jars and things. I would love it if people just wanted to have a big box at recycle day, put in your jar tops, your nails, your bolts, your whatever it is. And I could take them. And as you all know, it benefits, it goes to the budget of Sustain Rono. I tell people about it, but we all take such small bits and they say, oh, 50 cents. And the guy is always very nice. As you, anyone who's been there, it's very simple. 
And I just feel like I could have a box or there could be a box that would be, you know, sustain heavy things. And I could just put it in the car and take it down there. Um, anyway, okay. it's that's a, small, a great idea. It's a small mm -hmm. thing, but, you know, nobody wants to waste the gas <laughs> taking about this much stuff. Yeah. So, um, my concern with that would be weight. You know, if people bring really heavy things, they could bring, I don't know, something that's really heavy and, and, and drop it off. But if you can think, Anne, of, uh, a number of things that are easy to identify and separate out, um, why don't you send me a list? Okay. Um, we'll add it. And that, that will also make the list not feel so puny in comparison to the previous one. Yeah. And because of um, I did something like that a long time ago. You want to um, be sure that people know they have to be clean okay. because it's just a mess if you don't. Right, right. I, I know. Maybe I would just start with the thing of jar tops and nails and household, um, you know, the things that you hang on the walls and all that stuff. But Because I, cause I don't have a truck or anything. I just have a regular sedan. Um, but... Uh, Anyway, yes, we could we could do a little bit more in that be on that behalf and earn us in earn ourselves a little bit of money. That's great. Thank you, Anne. All right. Anything else? <clears throat> no, well, thank you so much. I mean, we've we've gone over the hour, but I think we have accomplished a lot. And I feel I, I don't know, I feel I feel that we are much um, better supported um, in making our decision. And, and that we can count on you to, to help us spread the word in the right, put them in the right way so that the message, sometimes it's not just what you do, it's how you message it, that they can get everything mangled. And so this is very important. All right. Well, thank you all. Thank you. It was great thank seeing you. you. Hi, and I will send you the link to the, to the video, just in case you want to share it with your families or want to see it again and see, oh, what was that thing? And, uh, but it is, it's going to be not public. It's going to be unlisted. So only people with the link will have access to, to the video. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Have Happy a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.